are Frank and Daphne, two not-so-young retirees from Canada who developed a love for cycle touring fairly late in life. In 2022, we decided to do a ride that would take us across Europe from the North Sea to the Adriatic. The route we planned started in Amsterdam, where we'd head west to dip our toes in the North Sea along the Netherlands coast, then follow the River Rhine upstream on Eurovelo 15 into Germany, a little bit of France and Switzerland, as far as Lake Constance. Here we leave the Rhine, switch to Eurovelo 6 and follow the river Danube from the Black Forest as far as the city of Passau in Germany. Then we leave the Danube and head in a southerly direction through Austria. This section is actually a little piece of Eurovelo 7. Then in Salzburg we'll pick up the popular Alps to Adriatic cycle trail, locally known as the Cyclovia Alp Adria Radweg which will lead us through the Alps, across the border into Italy and down to the Adriatic coast at a little town called Grado, about 100 kilometers east of Venice. So we hope you'll come along with us on the ride and join our adventure and see how we get on as we share this journey over several episodes. Hello, and thanks for joining us on day 30 of our ride across Europe. You've caught up with us just as we're leaving the small town of Leipheim, a little bit east of the city of Ulm along the Danube River in Germany. We're now well past the halfway point on our North Sea to Adriatic adventure, heading towards Passau and the Austrian border on Eurovelo 6. We're on our way to Gunzburg. Beautiful Friday morning. Bit of a cool breeze, but it's perfect for cycling. <laughs> you can't catch him. He's going really fast. Three dogs, no less, on his bike. <laughs> These cooling towers that we can see from here are at what used to be one of Germany's largest nuclear power plants, but its last operating unit C was closed down on December 31st, 2021, in keeping with Germany's policy to phase out nuclear energy. However, I did read that as of early 2022, there was still an option to restart operations. So who knows what will happen there now in light of recent world events. Coming up right away, we'll be going through several little towns along our route. Gundelfingen, Lauingen, Dillingen, and eventually on to Donauwerth. This was a rather amusing sight at a stoneworks business on the approach to Gundelfingen. 
Joseph Stalin and Clement Gottwald, standing tall amongst a collection of gravestones and garden ornaments. Frank knows his European history and he recognised Gottwald. He was the first communist president of Czechoslovakia. This five-storey gate tower was part of Gundolfingen city wall and dates from the 13th century. We're entering Lauingen. We just had really nice coffees here. So now I'm having a pedal issue. It started to make weird noises and it's kind of come apart. So I'm going to have my mechanic look at it. So my pedal is completely shot, just disintegrated, and so I just cleaned off that part, whatever you call it cleaned off all the lube and I'm just going to pedal on that till we can find a bike shop. Oh and by the way while we have this view of my bike here you can see uh, why I have this strange yellow thing on my cockpit. It's just a sponge that has a hole in the center where I can quickly stash my GoPro when I'm not waving it around in my hand. I'm just listening to the frogs. We're crossing the Danube for the first time today with about 19k to go to Donauworth and hopefully tomorrow morning a new pedal. At this point we had our sights set on a possible campground in Donauworth, 25 kilometers from where the pedal broke. And I was managing okay with the pedal as the terrain was pretty flat. But we noticed our cycling map showed another campground well before the town. But when we got to the spot, in the middle of farmland, we saw nothing but a beer garden with lots of cars parked outside. So I went in to inquire if they knew of camping in the area, and they said, yes, you can camp anywhere on the grass in the beer garden. Well, we weren't expecting that. Well, this might have to go down as one of the more unusual campgrounds we've found. It's a huge big beer garden. There's a petting zoo here and everybody's got platefuls of food, really good looking food, but we have our own. And there's one other couple camping here as well, a French couple. Thanks, 
cooking his sauteing up some camping in lardong camping bacon. in beer garden. <laughs> it's like a dream come true, is it not, Frank? Yeah, I wonder if we if they, are they gonna have beer in the morning. <laughs> so we're doing bacon bits and zucchini with penne and some salad. We're doing our penne the easy way tonight. Don't forget that we have an open bottle of wine. Oh yes, we have wine too. Okay. We haven't put the tent up yet. It's 10 to 8, but it's just a beautiful evening. And the place is still humming with people enjoying the beer garden on a Friday night. Good morning. Well, I just woke up. Now it's not every day you get to wake up in a beer garden. I'm gonna go check out the animals this morning. Morning bunnies. Good morning. Hello. garden camp and this is a campground that we can definitely recommend and it's very kid friendly too i think the seven euro charge is really just for the use of their nice bathroom and showers i managed to 10 kilometers or so to the town of donauworth where we made a beeline for a bike shop to get me a set of new pedals i'm so happy and relieved i have two new pedals yeah, good to go. What a relief. Okay. Now we're heading into the center of Donauer.
Warum? Ja, ich ja, ich 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 ja, I just did some climbing there for a bit. Uh, now we have wide open Bavarian countryside. And it doesn't even matter to me where I go. I just feel I need to take a ride. Got my coffee cup to go and I'm gonna hit the road tonight. Now my wheels in motion and my windows open with the wind blowing in my hair. I'm driving down the highway, gonna do this my way. I can feel it in the air. Here I go. After several breaks to cool off in today's 30 degree heat, we made it to the town of Newburg around 5 o'clock. The Newburg Palace dominates the scene here. It's a sprawling Renaissance mansion that was once the residence of an important prince when this area was a mini-state before it was absorbed into Bavaria in the Napoleonic era. One of the attractions of the palace are the biblical murals in the courtyard painted by a Dutch master in the 1500s. Yeah! We just did 2000! We're... We are seven kilometers short of Ingolstadt. We're hoping to camp there. Okay. Crossing the Danube, hopefully one final time for the day. Going to Ingolstadt campground. Today, as we head towards Regensburg, about 75 kilometers away, Eurovelo 6 will take us through the towns of Wolberg, Neustadt and Kelheim. A lot of the Bavarian towns we've seen have these poles with a tree on top and things hanging from them. I, I'm not sure what the significance is. We'll have to find out. I did find out that these are maypoles an old tradition in Bavaria, but certainly not unique to this part of Europe. The maypoles can look different from region to region. There is also a tradition of villages trying to steal one another's maypoles and holding them ransom for large quantities of beer. Like many of these German towns, Wolberg has a lovely city gate, this one in Gothic style called the Little Danube Gate, and it has turrets placed at an angle. Just a normal little German village with farm buildings and farm smells right in the center of the village. <laughs> but all their farm buildings look really, <laughs> I would say, prosperous. And many of them have solar panels. I think it might be about 30 degrees today, again. 
yeah we're in an area now with lots of hop growing there's a very old brewing tradition in this area we haven't seen hops anywhere else until just today so we are in a small community of Aining right on the river and there's a lot of activity here this Sunday afternoon So we're coming into Weltenberg and this is where the Danube en enters a narrow gorge and word on the street is you can take a boat through the gorge rather than doing the ride around which involves a lot of climbing. This is a very popular Sunday afternoon spot. On a bend in the river just before the narrow gorge stands the Kloster Weltenberg Abbey or Monastery, considered to be the oldest abbey in Bavaria, having existed on this site since 620 AD. Within the complex is a brewery that has operated since 1050, making it possibly the oldest monastic brewery in the world. The beer garden was just hopping on this warm Sunday afternoon. We have tickets to ride. We have ferry tickets. Cost 23 euro to take this ferry with the bikes down the gorge to the next town. We're off to find the boat. Huh, this makes a nice change from cycling. This pleasant little boat ride of about six kilometers took 45 minutes and landed us in the town of Kelheim. From Kelheim we continued east and seven kilometers later found a lovely farm campground. What's on the menu, Frank? These things. It's like chicken fricassee or something. Hühner fricassee. Gut und günstig. So we already had some really nice smoked herring with fresh basil and good bread. These are appetizers. Tonight our tent got well and truly tested as there was severe thunder and lightning with heavy rain pretty much all night. But fortunately everything stayed dry and there were no leaks. The great big concrete tank on the farm had excellent acoustics and the extra rainwater in there this morning must have made the resident frogs very happy. I was really entertained by them.
This campground had another option if you didn't want to use your tent. Schlafen im Straw, or sleeping in straw, is something they have in Germany and Switzerland. I'd love to do this sometime. I'm aware of the bonds that were created today. When you told me that sure there's a way. Monday morning. The water's so still. My pain is gone away The air is much cleaner after the rain Follow my love Except it's in spring air Follow the moment of the sun There's a call for new beginnings here But the sorrow of yesterday disappeared we are on our way to Regensburg, about 15k away. Bit of a headwind today, but a nice temperature for riding. And we're going to be along the Danube the whole way. Along the way. What's gone is gone. What's past is past. Let me walk in despite fear The road stretches over the hills And I've got many debts to pay Somewhere on their own way My pay is not We just reached Regensburg and for the first time we're starting to see some boat traffic. Eurovelo 6's riverside pathway led us right into Regensburg's old town which was given UNESCO status just in 2006. Stepping through the lovely brook turned city gate, you're taken back in time through an intriguing mix of Roman, Romanesque and Gothic buildings with narrow alleys and beautiful public squares. Regensburg is at the northernmost point of the Danube River and since Roman times has prospered over the centuries, been at the crossroads of trade routes. In amongst all these beautiful buildings, Frank found a lovely outdoor shop and bought himself a new sleeping pad to replace his leaky one that's been letting him down a lot lately. To continue our ride on Eurovelo 6 on the north side of the river, we got to cross this iconic 12th century stone bridge. After leaving Regensburg, we and the Danube headed southeast in the general direction of Passau, which we hope to reach in a couple of days. That's about another 175 kilometers from here. We're already looking forward to that, as we have a nice break plan for when we reach Passau. 
But tonight we made it as far as the town of Straubing. The Danube is just up over the dike, you can't see it now, but it has definitely grown larger. It has had some tributaries join it. Definitely one in Regensburg, the river Regen, and possibly some other smaller ones. So this is the very first transport boat we've seen on the Danube. We're downstream from Regensburg. We saw loads of them on the Rhine and I expect we'll see a bunch more ahead. So we're coming into a town called Strobing and it's got two campgrounds marked on the map. I have 82k on my clock and it's about 5.30 so today the wind really helped us for at least the last 30k. The first campground we tried was a canoe club but it was open to the public and tonight it was very quiet. This is the town of Straubing. We camped just outside the town last night, so on the approach I could count six towers. Some of them were churches, one might have been the city town hall, and loads of chiming bells this morning. Although we just had breakfast, we couldn't resist stopping for coffee in Straubing's beautiful historic town square before hitting the road just to sit and enjoy the ambience. The first barley harvesting that we've seen on yet another diversion of the Donau Radweg because of flood mitigation, construction and uh, new dikes being built. So today we've had some rerouting. This is Degendorf. We stopped in Degendorf town centre just long enough to have a nice coffee and make a hotel booking for the night in the town of Osterhofen, about 20 kilometres ahead. That hotel had a beer garden with excellent traditional German food and we both enjoyed our pork and spätzle. <laughs> I've seen this out, outside a number of homes so obviously this is what they do to welcome new babies and announce it to the world. A nice idea. Today is our very last day along the Danube. We'll be leaving her after Passau, about 50 kilometers down the road. But we're also kind of excited to be taking a few days off the bikes. We're ready for a break. with about 
25 kilometers to go to Passau. This is our last day cycling on the Danube train. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and we have a two day break. Yeah. And see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have Let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy But things are finally right On the final approach to Passau now, we watched as this barge entered the lock right next to the large Cachlet Dam. Hi David! Oh, well, you know. Then our fellow Canadian biker David showed up. We'd leapfrog by each other a few times along the journey since we first met him north of Basel on another lock two weeks ago. This is the last time our paths will cross, as he'll be eastbound towards the Black Sea, and we'll be turning south towards the Adriatic Sea. This is where we're going to cross the Danube for one last time. That's it, the end of our section of Eurovelo 6. Our last full rest day was over a thousand kilometers ago in Strasbourg. So we're going to check into this hotel for tonight, give the bikes a three day break, and take a detour on four wheels to the Czech Republic, or Czechia as it's now known, where we're going to meet up with some family in the historical town of Český Krumlov. We'll come back here in a few days to resume our adventure through Austria and ride what promises to be the highlight of the journey, the Alps to Adriatic Trail. So join us in episode seven for more about that. Okay.